Welcome to another episode of Ozfish. Davey, let's get some. In this episode, I want to talk a little bit about uh, beach fishing. People who subscribe to my channel uh, know that I'm kind of like a beginner beach fisherman. I've been fishing on the beach for about the last 18 months. But I've been fishing pretty hardcore for that 18 month period. And I was very fortunate when I began beach fishing to run into a Yugoslav fella by the name of Dano. He's about 70 years old. He's been fishing on the beach for 40 years and he is one of the best fishermen um, I've ever fished with. A fantastic fella and he took me under his wing and over an 18 month period he's taught me a lot about uh, beach fishing. He's taught me a lot about how to read the beach, where the fish are going to be, um, how he rigs up the systems that he's developed uh, to uh, catch fish on the beach. He's encouraged me to go out and uh, to catch my own beach worms. And with Dano, over the last 18 months, I've had some incredible uh, fishing trips with him and caught an incredible amount of fish, uh, from dewfish of all different sizes to, to big brim, uh, to big whiting. Um, he's taught me how to flathead fish on the beach, old school, uh, using bait. Um, yeah, I've caught, um, you know, monster salmon with him, big tailor, um, every sort of species you could imagine uh, on the beach of uh, caught with Dano. <laughs> But Dano's an old, old school fella. So with Dano, there's no filming uh, on the beach. No using the GoPro. He'll allow you, um, he'll take a photograph of me if I catch a bigger Jew, but he won't let me take any photographs of uh, himself uh, with fish that he's caught whilst we've been fishing together. But anyway, uh, yeah, he's been like an incredible um, influence in relation to, uh, to my beach fishing. So when Dano and I fish on the beach, we always use beach worms and he has an incredible system which is really another store in itself but he uses all 12 foot four wrap rods he just uses cheaper pen reels um, he uses a uh, 20 pound mono and all these paternoster rigs that he's developed and that he ties himself and we just use size one and one o long shank stainless steel hooks on those rigs and on those rigs over 18 months i've caught an incredible amount of fish and that system will catch you everything from big jew to small jew to huge salmon. It'll belt you all your whiting and all your brim, all the edible fish on the beach that Dano is trying to catch. So they're, they're absolute weapons. But over the last month, I've been down to Lake Macquarie and just taught myself how to catch arrow squid in Lake Macquarie. And since I've been catching arrow squid, Dano said to me, well, why don't you just go and take your big gear and just start experimenting um, with your arrow squid and see if you can catch some big jew, chase some real big dogs, you know, while we're fishing, while we're fishing our uh, paternoster rigs and our worms. So I have been on a learning curve um, over the last uh, 10 days in relation to uh, using arrow squid on the beach, chasing big mulloway or big jew fish. So here's a little story for you in relation to big jew and one of the things not to do on the beach when you're using a uh, heavy rod and a big reel. Do not use PVC pipe on the beach uh, on a big heavy outfit when you're chasing big dogs, big Jew on the beach. So the only time I would ever use PVC pipe is if I was using piece of PVC pipe like this, very thick and heavy, close to two meters in length. And I would belt that like into the sand, like as far as I could with a rubber mallet. You know, I would get it, you know, you know, all that, that much of the PVC pipe into the sand. Never use a big, big heavy rod on PVC pipe like this, about four foot long, recipe for disaster. But when Dano and, I, Dano and I fish, he uses custom built stainless rod holders with big triangles on the bottom and they hold into the sand beautifully and uh, we had four rods so he took the three stainless rods we set those up and he gave me this uh, piece of paper zip like that and he said look if you build it if you if you whack it into the sand take the first lot of sand out build it in as far as you can it should be sweet no worries I said so I had a big arrow squid and I use eight and a half ounce snapper leads on the bottom of my pattern rig and I belted it out and what happened was that like I was actually holding the rod in my hands and a Jew came along and I went whack and I caught a Jew about 
55 like uh, centimeters in length so anyway I quickly grabbed that fish let him go immediately took out another arrow squid punched it onto that paternoster rig straight back out like uh, into the uh, the gutter we were fishing then I just walked away from that like um, from that rod and reel about 30 meters just to grab a drink when I got to the bucket where I had a drink I looked round and I just saw my heavy outfit get absolutely just flattened like to the water so of course immediately I've just started sprinting like towards that rod and reel rod and reel came straight out of the rod holder hit the sand just got dragged like 15 feet in the sand I was still sprinting flat out and then it just pulsed and just hit the surf and I just did this desperation I just ran into the surf like up to my waist and dived out and just managed to catch hold of the handle of the reel and once I had handled grabbed it it was a pretty heavy nori swell I turned around and I began to uh, pull the rod back towards the shore and this fish was just 25 kilo plus easy it has just gone flat stick straight out it's probably pulled no more than like probably 15 20 meters um, off me and my line has snapped like a gun sh gunshot and I've landed in the surf mate I've gone up to the beach I was absolutely spewing and when I trekked checked my reel the sand had actually got underneath the drag knob and completely locked and seized that reel and I busted that fish off and like, I was just devastated like that was a big 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 fish you know that I'd hit and if there's an upside to that story um, that I actually managed to save um, my rod and reel and I took the star and I bought off and cleaned out all the sand and cleaned the reel back up, flushed it and washed fresh water and got it back together. And I kept fishing with that, um, that rod that night, caught a couple of other smaller dew that night. But uh, yeah, it was a painful lesson in relation to two things. Don't use like PVC pipe, you know, like in them four foot lengths for a heavy outfit. And I think what happened to me was, thinking about it was, when I set my drag on the reel, I didn't have it mega tight, I had it set enough to what I thought I could punch those J hooks into the hard mouth of a big Jew. But I don't think what I was allowing for is that when you have that 12 foot rod up in the air and the line's running over the runners and you have a really big fish on just like going hard straight east to sea um, against a huge sweep drag and an eight ounce snapper lead, I think it's increasing the drag uh, through the line, through the rod, and down to the reel. I probably, um, you know, like um, a double drag on my reel. Hence the PVC pipe, but kind of like uh, flattened out onto the sand. So I learned a valuable and painful lesson uh, from that. Is yeah, yeah, don't don't worry about them short PVC pipes. Use a custom built stainless one with a big triangle if you, if you can, or use at least two meters of, of PVC pipe, and then. What I'm going to do from now on, I was using way too much drag, I think, at the initial reel because you don't need near as much drag as you actually think when a big fish smashes into your bait and takes off. Then hooks are razor sharp and they'll penetrate. So that's, that's what I learned uh, from that lesson. But that was an, an incredible session. Like it was lightly raining the whole session, um, no wind, pretty heavy swell from the nor'east and a, a big sweep. And we were just fishing a gutter. Uh, it was sweeping pretty bad, but there was a slight depression, a little bit of a hole like in that gutter, just a little bit of a, a depression and a hole we could see before it hit a big hole on the left. And we were throwing the big bait straight into that depression. And that's where uh, the Jew, big Jew were laying. But um, yeah, it was incredible. But on, on that particular session, man, we pulled up um, probably halfway through the tide. Uh, began to fish at about four o'clock in the afternoon. Like Dano threw straight out first cast, hit a Jew about 55. And I thought, oh yeah, sweet, this is gonna be really good. And then um, we got a couple other small Jew around about the 45 to 50. And then um, Dano was sitting there having a, uh, a cup of tea and a biscuit. And I was just standing near my, uh, my big rod and I saw his far southern rod, the four wrap just flatten like to the water. I yelled out to him and he ran down and grabbed that rod. 
and that was a big fish like that was a fish over a meter we fought that fish on a four wrap on 20 pound in pretty heavy surf oh we fought it for about a good 10 minutes and Dano got that fish all the way right in uh, to the shore break and uh, thought we had that fish and a uh, right at the last minute like a big shore break just jacked up and just dumped that fish in front of it and busted off that 20 pound leader so we lost that fish and incredibly on that session the other thing I saw was there was a guy fishing up from us oh about you know like 150 to 200 meters and just before dark I saw that guy hit up big fish and I saw this guy fighting this fish for about 15 minutes and his mate was running around in this big heavy shore break with a gaff trying to gaff this dew for five minutes and then unbelievably I saw this guy one thing he was sitting way up the beach trying to fight a fish at least 40 40 meters up the beach near his car he never moved around a lot and then he sat down on the ground on his ass with his rod and tried to fight this big huge fish i could not believe it dano could not believe it and for the last minute five minutes of the fight he sat down on his ass fighting this really big jew um in the shore break never moved let the uh, fish come down the beach on him you know you know 50 60 meters left and he just stayed in position and his mate went round and round and round and round and round and round in the gaff and in the end they busted that fish off but i put a lot of time to fishing on the beach over the last 18 months and if you put enough time in you'll have these incredible sessions like a couple of days before we were fishing a howling black nor'easter and uh you're no one else on the beach uh but uh but dano and i and we got 11 dew uh on that trip plus some big whiting and um yeah like uh we, i think the biggest dew we caught was up close to 80 centimeters but we were catching dew between 80 centimeters to 60s to 65s to 50 to 55s uh, but yeah we caught 11 dew in that one trip and i'd say over the last two weeks i've seen dano and i um, have caught 40 dew of all different sizes uh, on that beach and blown a couple of really big fish uh, on the beach but what's incredible is that when those big dogs decide to move in mate it is unbelievable like in that one session i saw the old mate up the beach hit a big fish and blow him on the beach i hit a really big fish and what happened was that um, pvc pipe just came out you know i blew that blew that fish but that was a big fish and dano had hit a fish on the four wrap on that same session um well over a meter on a four wrap and lost him in the shore break after a uh, 10 minute fight now let me say from the outset that there are a lot of really good dew fishermen uh, on the beach. There's different ways to rig um, to catch dew fish, I guess, and, and different techniques to use. And um, yeah, well, guys catch on all different rigs, but what I've been using for, to throw the arrow squid that I've been actually catching is, is a Paternoster rig. And I tie that Paternoster rig in two different ways. So after much experimentation and losing a couple of uh, fish on the Paternoster rig, uh, this is the uh, final rig that I've come to at the moment that I'm gonna they're gonna fish with. So <clears throat> here's one way that we actually rig, like a paternoster rig for beach fishing. This is the rig that the Dano taught me and how we fish all our four wraps when we make up our paternoster rigs. Like, so what we do is we just use one swivel. And what we do is we actually tie a blood knot and we allow enough on the other end of the blood knot we double the line over tie a blood knot and then we leave a lot of line uh, for the drop where our sink is going to go on the paternoster rig and you might notice that there's some tubing stuck over the top of the uh, swivel and what that tubing does is yeah it prevents like the dropper most of the time from actually swinging around the main line on the top so it's a crucial part of our rig and then what we do is we love to leave a really big drop that we're going to put our eight ounce snapper lead on because we want to get that bait we want to get that squid up in the water column you know like a little bit for the juice swimming along and they'll run into it as they're swimming along you know like um, two to three to four feet up off the bottom of the sand you know they'll run into those squid or if they go underneath it they'll rise to it and um, it seems to work really well 
uh, with a really big drop to your sinker on a 12 foot rod. Now if there's an Achilles heel in relation to using a, uh, a Paternoster rig is that we only ever use on our dropper about 40 centimetres. We don't want to go any longer than that in the dropper because you can have problems in the turbulent surf of it twisting around um, you know, your main line. Um, so we don't want that. And I'm just using uh, J hooks. I'm just snelling J hooks on to the, the line that I'm going to catch the Jewfish on. And these are actually 5 O's. So I use double 5 O's on smaller squid and I use uh, double 6 O's and then double 7 O's. I've got some different rigs up, mate, depending on the size of squid I'm using. And what I do is, I don't use fluorocarbon on the uh, the main like branch line off the Paternoster rig. What I do is I just use 50 pound Snyder. It's a thick monofilament like that, and I use the same when I make the dropper up for the sinker. Now the reason why I do that is, is because I'm using a pretty heavy rod uh, with not a massive amount of like. Um, or bending, it's a reasonably stiff rod, but it's made for throwing really big baits and, and heavy weights and for chasing big dogs, you know, on the beach. Now what happens is that the monofilament has really good sort of stretch in it when you're fighting a big fish, which I think is an advantage to combat some of the stiffness of the rod. Um, you know, this big dropper has a fair bit of stretch when you're dragging that big sinker. Now if there's one Achilles heel, to a pattern Noster rig is yeah like I said before it's this branch line on big fish when you get them at times they'll change direction and they will go around and they can just cut you off on this section here it's happened to me a number of times on big fish when I began experimenting to, with this rig so now what I do is I'm actually using 60 pound black magic fluorocarbon um, up simply to a swivel and it's a softer fluorocarbon but that is simply just designed to try to stop uh, the fish from cutting you off when they uh, do swim around um, you know the line your main line up there but, and, oh, when I first started I was tying my 30 pound mono straight down onto the swivel with a tube and yeah a couple of times big fish cut me off um, so now I've um, began to use uh, 60 pound fluorocarbon above here just to um, you know, try to combat that uh, that problem but yeah this this particular rig uh, for me paternoster rig on the beach double snelled hooks 40 centimeter dropper um yeah it's a uh, fishes really well doesn't twist up too much and uh it's deadly uh on dew you know like uh, on the beach big fish small fish i've caught some cracking big tailor um on it over the last couple of weeks on the on the squid and i should imagine um as the, as the salmon come on uh through the winter which is going to be an absolute pain on the squid stocks. Uh, big salmon will smash you on whole squid uh, off those Paternoster rigs. So, yeah, it works really well. And the other Paternoster rig that I've been using uh, on the beach and experimenting with, uh, which I kind of like, uh, that's what I hit that really big fish on the other day, is uh, a big, heavy duty, like, um, yeah, three way swivel. And again, I place the tube. Uh, above the three-way swivel to try to prevent the fish swimming around the main line of up to 60 pound fluorocarbon uh, It's it's long enough. It's longer than the actual main branch of the Paternoster rig um, To try to help when they uh, swim around the main line and again, yeah Down to a big a big dropper down to the sinker to get it up in the water column, but um, They this is the rig that they fish in West Australia a lot and South Australia a lot when they're chasing uh, really big uh, big Jewfish, big Mulloway uh, off the beaches there. And um, yeah, so I'm rigging my Paternoster rigs in two ways. One with a, uh, a three-way swivel, and the other way that my mate Dano showed me with uh, one swivel on the, um, the doubled over blood knot. So yeah, these rigs have um, been working um, really, really good for us. It's been a painful um, lesson in relation to learning to use the Paternoster rig, how heavy a line um, to use to try to combat some of the, uh, the fish going around the line. Um, but yeah, it's um, on the beach, it's just been like over the last two weeks. I've seen a lot of epic fishing over the last 18 months, but the last two weeks as the Jew fishermen on the beach, when them Jew show up, man, they, they show up 
in uh, in numbers and it's just an incredible thing to experience and an incredible thing to actually see and there's one last tip that I want to leave you with when you're dew fishing on the beach for dew fish what happens is on the beach is that you know you'll be set up with a we're, we're fishing four rods with two guys there which is manageable okay what happens is when the dew come into your gutter you've got a short window to catch them so you'll be fishing away it's relatively quiet and the dew will come in through that deeper hole to the right of you or sometimes to the deeper hole to the left of you into your narrow gutter that we're fishing we like to fish narrow gutters to concentrate the fish but those dew will be traveling down the beach in schools and those schools will be mi a mix of fish they'll, they'll be fishing those schools this big that are like you know just over 35 centimeters and you'll hit fish 45 centimeters up to 50 55s 60s you'll get 80s and 90s and you will get big dog dew 20 kilo 25 30 kilo fish mixed in with all those different size dew and they come into a gutter and you've got a short window uh, to build as many dew as you can so Dano and I like we we work as a team I'll give you an example the other afternoon we were fishing like and what happened was I'd hit a dew close to 80 on my pattern Oster rig and I'd immediately like I'd, I'd grab that fish thrown in behind me immediately like put another squid on as I looked up Dano had hit another big fish you know, on one of the smaller rods he was fighting that fish so I threw the fish uh, behind me immediately threw my squid out I noticed that Dano had a paternoster rig sitting there with worms on it that he was just about to throw out when he hit that big fish I immediately ran to that rod and I just deployed that rod as well so that we still had three rods immediately out in that gutter while Dano was fighting a big fish going down the beach with it and um, if you work together as a team and you keep those lines in the water in that window that you've got to catch those dew yeah you will just belt dew and we belted like six dew out of that school and it was in the gutter for about 15 minutes then that school moves up the beach and then as it got dark either that school or another school would come into our gutter and we belted another five or six uh dew or that school's turned around and worked its way back down um the gutter in the dark so yeah if i if i give you one advice yeah, when you show up and you start to hit those dew, work as a team with your mates, get them rods out, catch a fish, immediately throw it behind you or let it go if you're going to let it go and just redeploy and you can belt a lot of fish over a uh, 15 minute window. Anyway, that's a little uh, discussion in relation to my experiences uh, on the beach of dew fishing over the last couple of weeks, uh, a little bit of an overview of my fishing on the beach over the, over the last 18 months and really um, my exploration in relation to the use of a pattern Noster rig and how effective um, freshly caught arrow squid washed in salt water, frozen in plastic reset oil bags and frozen immediately, they come out pristine on the beach and the, uh, the fish absolutely love them. And uh, yeah, don't go throwing heavy gear man on uh, pissy PVC pipes because uh, it's a recipe for disaster. I almost lost my complete like um you know like whole outfit that i love um the other afternoon and uh, besides blowing a really really big dew and you just don't get that many shots um, on really really big dew on the beach so anyway this is uh ozfish signing off